Hi, I'm Tom Kenny, Director of Communications for NASBA, the National Association of State Boards of Accountancy. I'm here today with David Vout for NASBA's Executive Chat Series. Welcome, David. Glad to be here, Tom. You know, I'd like to say personally and from all the people at NASBA, congratulations. Thank you. On this esteemed position. It's great. So you have lived your entire life in Iowa, and now you've moved to Connecticut. What's that been like? It's been a really smooth transition. I was very fortunate I was able to start with the GASB on May 13th. So it actually gave me seven weeks of overlap with former chairman Bob Atmore. And that really allowed me to get my feet on the ground. I was able to sit through a couple of board meetings and also get to know the staff. So it's been a, a beautiful area out here in Connecticut. I'm very happy to have this opportunity. So how, how do you think the winners will be this, this year compared to winners in Iowa? Well, you know, when I looked at the climate uh, index for both Iowa and Connecticut, they, have, they are actually very similar. Oh, wow. um, but I think sometimes they get a little more snow here, but I'm ready for it. <laughs> That's good. You have an elaborate professional background. Could you give us a little bit more insight of all the positions you've had to lead you up to this esteemed position? Tom, it really all started when I got out of college with my accounting degree and joined uh, what is now KPMG. And I really had the opportunity in the Des Moines office to heavily focus on the government practice. My very first engagement was a school district and then a city, and I focused my entire 25 years working with governmental audits, uh, accounting and reporting, the whole, whole gambit of things. And that really well prepared me for my spurred interest to run for elective office in Iowa mm -hmm. as Iowa State Auditor. So I had lots of experience at KPMG, and then the last 10 years, as I was elected state auditor, I focused on the state audit along with the over 200 local government audits that we did at the state level. So those two components really well prepared me for this GASB chair position. Great. So what is the one particular skill, ability about David that you can share with us that led you to this leadership role? I think part of it probably relates to the way my wife Jeannie and I have practiced our personal lives and our professional lives. And it really comes down to these simple words. It's always the right time to do the right thing. I can tell you that it's not always easy to do the right thing, but the long-term benefits are definitely there when you do the right thing each and every time. So can you tell us a little bit about your leadership style? I would say that I, my leadership style is very consensus building. In fact, I remember answering this question when I was being considered for election as the vice chair of NASPA. Uh, it's one of those roles where I think as a leader of a seven-member board where we have seven very talented individuals all bringing different perspectives to the table. Uh, my role is to make sure that we reach out to stakeholders, we get all the different alternatives laid on the table, and then the seven board members sit around and reach a consensus of what's the best solution. So I think I'm uh, well prepared for that, and my experiences as NASBA chair also help me prepare for this. Well, that's great. So tell us about a culture you would like to set here for GASB. I think the culture that I'm really making sure is existing is what I call listening. Uh, I really believe that God gave me two ears and one mouth because I'm supposed to listen at least twice as much as I speak. And that's how you really learn. And we're going to practice that a great deal here at GASB to make sure we listen to our stakeholders and get their input and feedback as we make our decisions. Well, that's really great. So let's get down to business about GASB. Are there certain initiatives that you have for the GASB? I'd say my first initiative is to make sure that we build strong relationships with our stakeholder groups and that we have good communication channels with each stakeholder group. When we're de deliberating different issues at the GASB board level, what we want to make sure is we have all the input and feedback to make the best decisions, and we can only do that with the participation of our stakeholders. So stakeholder participation, broad participation, is going to be a key emphasis in my role as chair. Great. That's great. So do you have any certain projects for the GASB? I would say definitely the first project that we're going to be working on is completion of the pension standards. A lot of times people think that once the GASB issues its standard that everything's done. But as a board, we're also making sure that our stakeholders have the resources they need to understand and implement those standards. We recently issued an implementation guide on the plan perspective, and we're now working on the employer perspective for implementing these new pension standards. So definitely a heavy emphasis on pension standards. So I would have to say the pension standards, the real question is, did the GASB get it right? I would say definitely yes. 
Uh, when you take a look at the pension standards, nothing really changed from the economics of the pension promises that governments have made. The economics are exactly the same as they were before. But what we've been able to do is make sure that the policymakers have the relevant and decision useful information they need to make the right policy decisions. And we've really elevated the whole net pension liability, bringing it to the face of the financial statements so that policymakers see what it is they've promised and make sure that they set aside the funds to actually fund those promises. That's the real issue. It's not a, an accounting issue. Mm -hmm. It's been more of a funding issue. Have assets been aside, set aside to actually fund those liabilities? So you pretty much answered my next question was, uh, what are the new standards going to yield? I think the other thing they're going to do is bring more comparability and consist mm -hmm. consistency in the measures so that when one looks at one government, you can contrast it better with another government. And the other thing is it's elevated the discussion that's taking place at policymaker level. They're actually looking at these liabilities and saying, let's make sure that we're adequately funding those in each and every budget that we develop. Great. I understand the board is currently working on a compensation uh, project related to retiree health care and other benefits. Can you elaborate on that? Yes, uh, what's often referred to as OPEB, other post-employment benefits, uh, the biggest area being retiree health care. This is an area where governments have also made promises. They're a little bit different than the pension promises, but they're still promises. And the big thing that we're doing there is taking a hard look at it, and I think we'll probably come out very similar to the pensions and bringing on a net liability onto the balance sheet or the face of the financial statements. And I think the issue there is going to be that a lot of governments don't realize it, but their actual OPEB liability will probably be larger than their pension liability in some governments. And the reason is the pension side of things have been underfunded, so they haven't set aside enough assets. But when it comes to OPEB, they typically haven't set aside any assets, so it's totally unfunded. So what are some other things we can look forward in for the future for GASB? I think as we go forward, the big push that I'm going to have is to make sure that we continue that stakeholder outreach. We cannot make the right decisions if we don't have the input and feedback from all the stakeholder groups. And I'm talking about the users, the preparers, and the auditors. Their input is absolutely critical to the board making the best decisions. So you can definitely plan on seeing lots of stakeholder out outreach. The other thing I want to do is also outreach to some of the stakeholders we maybe haven't touched as frequently, uh, policymakers, to try and find out where they're headed with some of their practices and policies and see if we can be ahead of them on the road to make sure that we're actually setting some of those standards before they actually get out there rather than saying now that you've developed this practice how are we going to account for it let's be developing how we're going to account for it as we're developing new practices. Uh, we've talked about a number of areas in which GASB has issued guidance or is, is about to issue some guidance. Is there a point when there is a GASB overload for your constituents? I think every standard setter has to be cognizant of the fact that you don't want to overload the actual stakeholders out there. But we also have to be recognizing that practices change and that mm -hmm. means the accounting literature and reporting has to change along with it. But I think it, to put it in perspective, uh, I recently read where the Financial Accounting Standards Board, the FASB, actually over the last 10 years issued 200 standards. To put that in contrast with the GASB, in the nine years that uh, Chairman Atmore was here, there were actually 31 standards. So I think it helps put it in perspective that on the governmental side, uh, we haven't been doing overload, but we do have to make sure we're keeping up with changing practices. So you have a lot of catching up to do with the FASB. Yeah, and we don't want to catch up with them either. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great. David, I really want to thank you for your time today. Tom, thank you for taking the time to speak with me, and be sure to tell my NASBA friends hi from Dave. I definitely will. David Vout, former chair of NASBA, newly appointed chair of the GASB, this is NASBA's Executive Chat Series.